you are standing in the Fichtenberry Gallery, which contains a unique private art collection from the final decades of the 19th century. It is also one of the most appreciated and famous sections of the Gothenburg Museum of Art. The Fichtenberry Gallery has received its name from the married couple Jotilda and Pontus Fichtenberry. Pontus and Jotilda met and fell in love when they were young, but Jotilda's father, Edward Magnus, could not accept Pontus as a husband for his daughter, and they could get married only after his death. In 1880, they settled down in the Fichtenberry Palace at Brunsparken, which Jotilda had inherited. Here, they built up their art collection through purchases at exhibitions such as the Paris Salon, the leading art exhibition of the time. They also purchased works of art directly from the artists and became friends with several of them. The collection was jointly owned by both of them and they seem to have shared a great interest in art. However, Pontus Fischenberry was the most outwardly active of them. Maybe this was due to the conventional roles of husband and wife in 19th century marriages, in which the man was expected to be more active in the public arena while his wife took care of the home. In photographs from the interiors, we can see what the Fischenberry's private gallery looked like. The paintings hung close to each other on the red walls, and daylight streamed in from the window panes in the ceiling. The interior decoration was typical for the time period, with thick curtains, pot plants, heavy tables and upholstered chairs, but there were also novelties such as electric lighting and a telephone. Raphael Coulin's large painting, Summer, held a central place on the inner wall. When the gallery was decorated, the sculptor Per Hasselberry was engaged as an advisor and he was responsible for the planning of the sculptural program. In the photograph you can see Hasselberry's ceiling groups which depict some of the scientific discoveries and technological inventions of the modern period. Here, steam power and magnetism. The gallery was inaugurated in 1885. It was the first private art gallery that was open to the public, even if in practice only a small clique in the upper stratum of society found their way there. In a later phase, it expanded into another adjacent elongated room known as the New Painting Gallery. These portraits of Pontus and Jotilda are painted by Anders Sorn. In the double portrait, they are portrayed as upstanding members of the Gothenburg bourgeoisie. During his career, Zorn gained many prestigious commissions for portraits, for instance of several American presidents. Zorn is also one of the most famous artists in Swedish art history. In the beginning of the 1880s, he was part of the opponents movement. In 1886, his hotel room was the scene for the formation of the artists' union by some of the group's members. From left to right, we see Per Hasselberry, August Hogbori, Karl Larsson, Ernst Josefsson, and Richard Barry also members of the opponents movement and well-known artists who are represented in the Fischtenberry Gallery. The opponents movement was a group of Swedish artists who were inspired by French outdoor painting and were opposed 
to the traditional art training in the art academy. Instead of the academy's traditional methods with model studies and history painting as the premium genre, the opponents wanted to take the easel out into nature in order to better depict the natural light. The works of the opponents are for this reason free of idealization and myth-making. Instead, we encounter the simple strivings of everyday life. In Carl Larson's watercolor November, we see an elderly man with a walking stick in an unassuming vegetable garden. It was painted during Larson's stay in Grès sur Loin in the countryside near Paris, where an international artist's colony had been founded. Many of the opponents were active in both Paris and Gré during this time. Fischenberry became aware of the opponents' work at an early stage and supported the group with purchases and financial aid. Mainly thanks to his support, the opponents had a stronghold in Gothenburg. Despite Fischenberry's taste being at the forefront in radical contemporary Scandinavian art, there are few works by women in the collection. One of the exceptions is Hanna Pauli's painting The Barn, with a child looking out over a red-painted barn at sunset. In this respect, the Fischenberg Gallery was typical for its time. During the 1880s, several female artists appeared on the stage, but it was hard for them to become established in the patriarchal art world. The Art Academy in Paris did not accept female students, so Swedish women artists had to turn to other schools for art studies in the French capital. In this watercolor, Carl Larsson has rendered the interior of the Fichtenberg Gallery. To the right stands Ernst Josefsson, busy painting a portrait of Jotilda Fichtenberg, while Pontus, in the foreground, peruses a graphic print. In their will, the Fichtenberg couple donated their art collection to the city of Gothenburg. In addition to the artworks and parts of the interior decorations, some of the original furniture is also on display in the Fischenberg Gallery at the Gothenburg Museum of Art, and the color of the walls is reminiscent of the gallery of the Fischenberg couple. The present hanging is not an exact reconstruction, but gives the atmosphere of the original gallery. The Fischtenberg Gallery is one of the foremost collections of Scandinavian art from the late 19th century and provides a living insight into the art that two art collectors considered to be the finest of their time.